I'm going to show you how to set up a complete email server using Postfix and Squirrel Mail. Before you can get started, there's a few things you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to download Putty if you're on Windows. Everything is in the link. Everything is in the description as well as links below um, that you can follow along. So you're going to need Putty. You're going to also want to have WinSCP that's going to allow you to transfer files from your machine, your home computer, to the server that you're hosting on. You're also going to need a Linux server, either using uh, Ubuntu Linux or Debian Linux. This will not work on Windows. And um, you're also going to need a VPS. So I highly recommend if you don't have a VPS and you want to follow along with this video and not have troubles, that you check out a web host by the name of OVH. They're a great web host and they have um, a cheap alternative for like VPSs. So the VPS will run you like $3.25, which is really cheap. And another thing that you might want to consider having is, is an SSL certificate. It stands for Secure Socket Layer. And what it does is, is it encrypts your passwords and usernames when you log into the email. Um, so you might want to get something like that. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right in to the video now on doing this. So you're going to want to log in to your VPS using PuTTY. Uh, you'll want to put in your IP address uh, for your server, which mine is here. And the port should be um, SSH, which would be port 22. Go ahead and click the open button. Um, you'll be prompted with a window like this for the first time. You'll want to press the uh, click on the yes button. And then you'll want to uh, see this window here. And you're going to want to log into uh, this window using your root password and username. And that'll allow you to log into your VPS. All right, so before we can set up the actual services, we're going to need to do a couple of things. We're going to need to get the updates and everything, as I mentioned, is in the link description below. And um, you'll be able to follow along by just copy and pasting those in. Hopefully, if you have, like I said, the right stuff, the right setup and all that, you shouldn't have any problems doing this at all. Um, and that should hopefully get you set up. Um, now what we need to do is we need to distro, we need to update the distro with like the latest fixes and stuff because there could be vulnerabilities in some of the, the uh, packages and, and uh, applications that are installed on the uh, the server. So we're gonna go ahead and update. So we're gonna go ahead and do the dist uh, dash upgrade. So we're gonna go ahead and press enter. And if you get a message like this where it says, do you wanna continue, press Y to everything that, that asks for that. And this will go ahead and get all the fixes for your um, VPS or dedicated server. So after the disk, um, the update has been finished, we're gonna go ahead and install Apache 2 for our website. Um, take in mind that you only need to install Apache 2 if this is a bare bones server. So for example, if you're gonna host with OVH, then you're gonna to wanna to pick from the uh, website being like Debian or Ubuntu. You don't wanna use like LAMP. Uh, there's one that sets that up, but you don't wanna do that. If you wanna follow along with this video, you wanna pick uh, Ubuntu. It doesn't matter what version, but it has to be um, Ubuntu or Debian. So we're gonna go ahead and start Installing the Apache server is asking to confirm yes or no. We're going to type yes. I'm pretty sure you'll probably want to use MySQL databases for, say, like uh, WordPress or something along those lines. If you do, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the next command, which is to uh, install MySQL server and then PHP 5 MySQL server, and you'll be able to do it that way. So we're going to go ahead and install that, press Y for yes, and then Go ahead and let that install. And now you're gonna be prompted for this screen here. This is gonna be your root password for logging into the MySQL database. You might wanna take note of this password before you um, use it, because if you forget your password, it's a real pain to try to reset that password. So make sure you have a password that you can memorize. All right, so the next part is to install the MySQL DB. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then I'll go ahead and install the uh, database for us. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, do some settings for the MySQL to make things a little bit more secure. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If we have a password for root, which you should have entered a password for your root MySQL, you're going to need to um, enter that password so that you can um, be able to log in to your SQL database. All right, so um, you already have a root password set, so you can safely answer no. And if you want to take the time to change the password, now is the chance to do that. If not, you can go ahead and type in for no. And we're going to remove anonymous users, so type Y for yes. And we're going to type um, yes to uh, disallow uh, root access remotely. And we're going to go ahead and remove the test database. So Y again. And now we're going to reload the privilege table. So Y again. And now that's finished. Okay, so if you test your website by going to your website, you should hopefully see this page. We can fix this later. All you have to do is go into um, your directory. And hopefully I'll remember to show you where that is. But if I don't, the directory you'll need to log into when SCP and then head over to var v a r forward slash www and then if there's an uh, HTML as well then you need to go in that folder you should see an HTML file in there and if you do that's where you'll upload your files to all right so now we're gonna go ahead and install the postfix server this is for your email server and here you're gonna be asked what to you're going to configure it with. If you use the arrow key, uh, you should be able to select the OK button and press enter. You're going to want to pick internet site and press enter. Or if you, if it doesn't do anything when you press enter, just use the arrow key on your keyboard to navigate to the OK button and then press enter. All right. So here we have to enter in our domain name. You need a domain name like a .com or .net, .org domain name to use an email server. So for example, if I wanted to use like um, Matthew at domain.com, then I need to own domain.com. If you don't own that domain, you can't use it. So you'll need to have a domain name that you can go register at something like GoDaddy or something like that where you can pick up a domain name. So I've gone ahead and put in my domain for the mail server. We're gonna go ahead and press OK on that. And now we're going to let it finish installing. Okay, now we need to install Dovicot. This is the feature that's going to allow us to use the mail server. So we're going to type Y for yes if it asks, press enter, and then let it install as well. All right, so the next step is we're going to install the Squirrel Mail. This is the web interface that you'll be able to access uh, to log into your email with. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Type Y for yes. And we're going to go ahead and let that install. Now we need to configure the uh, squirrel configuration so that we can use our domain name. So we're going to go ahead and use that command. In this section here, we're going to pick option two for server settings. So type two and press enter. We're going to use um, domain. So we're going to type one and press enter. And in this section here, you need to type in your domain name and then press enter. I'm going to go ahead and enter mine now. So as you can see there, I have it entered down there at the bottom. Nothing's changed. All I did was type in the uh, website name, press enter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press the R key on our keyboard, press enter. We're going to go down to number four. So we're going to type four. This will be for the general options. So type four on your keyboard, press enter. We're going to type in 11. This will allow us to... Um, allow server side sorting. It's currently disabled, but well, we're going to turn it on. So type 11 and then press enter. And then we're going to type Y for yes and press enter. Now we're going to type S for save. And then we're going to press enter again. Now we're going to type Q on the keyboard, press enter. Now we're done configuring the squirrel mail. All right, so now we need to copy some configuration files for Apache as well as the um, uh, squirrel mail configuration file. 
So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that into the terminal and that is good now. And now we're going to need to enable the uh, squirrel mail configuration file so that we can access the uh, mail uh, section. And we're going to need to now, after we've enabled the uh, squirrel mail, we're going to need to create a user and this is going to be the name of your email. So for example, I'm going to be creating the email called billing. So the user that I'm going to add is billing. You're not going to add the domain. You're just going to add the name. So for example, if you wanted to have your name at your domain, you would just put in your name and then press enter. This will add your, add your um, name so that you'll be able to log in once you have everything else set up. Next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a password for that email. So we're going to go ahead and create a password for billing or your email. Okay. Now that that's done, now we're going to need to create a directory. And this is very important for this part because we're almost done. You need to check your directory and make sure that the path that you're about ready to paste for the uh, MKDIR for where it shows var www HTML, you're going to need to make sure that that path is correct. So if you're using OVH and you have Debian or Ubuntu, this should be the correct path for you. If you're using some other hosting company, you're going to need to log in through WinSCP and check out the var www directory. And if there's nothing after www when you log into the uh, when SCP, you'll want to just use uh, the WW. So you want to remove some of this um, information in the in the copy and paste section. So this is the directory that I'm going to create. So that's where I'm going to create it. And I've gone ahead and created it. Now I need to create a um, another um, thing here. So. You're going to replace this with your email name. So for example, I'm using billing. So it's going to be billing space billing and press enter. Now it says billing exists. Now we're going to add one last thing to the uh, setup here. And there's a little bit more you'll see already in the description, but this is going to create a user group for billing so that only billing can access that area. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press enter now, and we should be able to head over to um, the squirrel mail. Now, take in mind if there's an issue where you're getting the uh, 404 error, like I probably should get, you just need to restart the uh, uh, Apache server. So we're going to go ahead and restart the Apache server. All right, so this is going to go ahead and restart the Apache server. Hopefully, if you have no errors, then it should go ahead and start successfully. And if it does, you should now hopefully be able to access the squirrel mail like you see there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and log into squirrel mail. Um, if you're unable to log in with your e your email name with the, with the domain at the end of it, just use the uh, name that you created for the email. And the next thing you do is enter your password. Now there should be an error that should come up. Maybe it won't come up for you. Maybe it will, but for OVH it does. So we're going to go ahead and log in real quick and I'll show you the error. All right. So this is the error I was referring to. If you get an error like this, then you need to go back into the terminal and add the following command that's in the description. It is add user billing or your uh, email name and then mail at the end of it. Now, if you want to create um, more emails, you just run the same command that you did in the same commands that you created for the first email. So when you did the user add billing, then you would uh, change billing to whatever other name that you wanted to have. So if you want a customer support, you would add uh, or you replace billing with customer support and then create a password for that and then create the directory and all that other stuff that I mentioned. And you probably have to do this command that you just did for that one as well. Now you should be able to um, access your email here and I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and now the error is gone and you should be able to send emails now and I'm going to go ahead and do a test email to send to this email so stand by. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and send this email and we should get this in just a few um, over on the um, 
inbox here. So depending on how fast your server is and all that stuff may take a few minutes uh, to show up, but I've gone ahead and sent a email. So there's the email we're looking for. And as I mentioned, email works, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Um, hopefully this video has helped some of you out. I apologize that the video is so long, but I try to cover as much as possible so that there's um, hopefully no uh, left out stuff so that you can just set this up without having to wait for me to reply to uh, the channel. Also, like I had mentioned in the video, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you um, might think about getting an SSL certificate. This is like if you're planning to want to have a secure um, email service. So if you, you log in through public Wi-Fi, yeah, chances are somebody sniffing that traffic, they can uh, steal your username and password and start sending out spam mail and whatnot. So that's the reason why you want a SSL certificate. Anyways, so as I said, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like it. If you like this video, feel free to hit the like button. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And remember to check out the description if you need any of the commands.